Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to pay our respects to the Wajab Nungar people and their traditional land as we meet at Golanga. That is the traditional name for Palm Spot. I only found that out today. Before I begin, I would like to wish all of you a happy Dipavali or Diwali, whichever way you say it. Tonight, I will be speaking on the significance of this very special celebration and the story of Diwali. Before I do that, I would like to begin with the story that is common to the majority of the people in this room. And that is the story of our forefathers and, and mothers who left the shores of India and made the two month journey across what they described as the Kalapani, translated into the black ocean waters. Many of them had never seen the ocean. Can you imagine their fear when they saw that black ocean? The first ships left India 164 years ago, in 1860. Many of our, South many of our ancestors' South African journey started then. The ships left Calcutta and Madras in early October, which means that they would have been on board those ships during the festival of Diwali. The conditions were deplorable. At least 14% of the people on one of those ships died. That's about 340 people. The conditions would not have allowed for any Diwali celebrations at that time. So why am I referencing those ancestors? From that very first Diwali, and through all the discrimination abuse and persecution during the colonial and apartheid years, those forefathers and mothers persevered in keeping the spirit of Diwali and all of their traditions alive. Their pioneering spirit allowed them to hold fast to their religion, their culture, language, food, festivals, and prayers. Diwali was one of the main festivals that were celebrated that brought families and communities together when they celebrated this auspicious festival of light disperses darkness. The religious significance of Diwali varies within India and also within South African homes. Some families pray to Mother Lakshmi and they fast on the day of Diwali. The main belief is linking Diwali to the Ramayana where the one is the day Lord Rama, his wife Sita, his brother Lakshmana, and Lord Hanuman reached Ayodhya after 14 years in exile. This was after a long fought war where Lord Rama was victorious over King Ravana. It is a message of good triumphing over evil, of light triumphing over darkness. While Lord Rama and Sita traveled from the south to the north, the, the story is that their path was lit with deers, and even in South Africa today, many, many homes are lit up with, with light to signify that memorable, memorable part of history. Some believe that this story of Lord Rama and Sita is about 2,500 years ago. Some believe that it's 7,000 years old. I think, I think that it's phenomenal that through all of the stories, through all of the ages that have persevered and have been preserved, the story of a man who was faced very often with an easier path, but he chose the path of Dharma, meaning that he chose the path that was more arduous is a story that is remembered today in India in the, and in the north and south of India. We all know that there's many celebrations in India, but Diwali is one of those celebrations that's, uh, that's celebrated north and south um, within India. My personal belief that it's because the message of Diwali is simple. 
It's light over darkness. And over the ages, and even today, this is the ultimate war. As a child in South Africa, the build-up to Diwali was mom in the kitchen making baked goods and sweet meats. And we used to wake up on Diwali day to the excitement of having a three uh, oil bath. Then we would make parcels and we would share this with the neighbors and friends. But the true celebration started at sunset. We lit the ears, placed them along driveways, or along arches, along window sills, and even the humblest of homes became magical. Many of us here come from the townships in South Africa, and I remember many of those places being, being transformed on the night of Diwali. And the grand finale to that evening was the bursting of fireworks. Many of our parents were, were, were trying to make ends meet throughout their lives. So having the privilege of having fireworks was celebrated. Many of our dads uh, had let allow the little boy in there come out and made certain that we had the joy of sparklers, the burst of fireworks, and the noisier the better. They, they didn't want to deprive us of the joy of being able to celebrate on that special night. In present day, we still honor all those ancient traditions and celebrate this very, very auspicious ceremony and festival and pray that good will always triumph over evil and light will triumph over darkness in our communities, in the world, and most importantly, inside of ourselves. Many of us here share a similar story to those first ancestors who stepped on those ships. And like them, we have made a new country, a new continent our home. As we assimilate into the Australian culture, we can still hold aloft our shared culture, traditions, and values, and bring all of that into the Australian diaspora as we are doing tonight. Thank you to Cree and Kanthan who have made this evening possible. It's been months in the making, Cree. Your attention to detail and the time you have put into making tonight possible is truly appreciated by all of us here tonight. You have allowed us to celebrate as a community whilst raising funds, and I know that's very dear to your heart. Enjoy your evening, ladies and gentlemen. And once again, from my family to yours, a happy and blessed Diwali. Right now, I'd like to call upon Kriya and Kantan to light the beer and say a Sanskrit prayer. And if some of you would like to, you, you may stand whilst that's happening. Thank you. Thank you, Nishan.